Hi, this is Ms. Tech Bar. We'll be going over Virgin Mobile's Android smartphones that they have out. Here we have the Samsung Intercept running Android 2.2.2. This one is updated. The LG Optimus running Android 2.2.1 and the Motorola Triumph running Android 2.2.2. Here we have the Samsung Intercept. It has a 800 megahertz single chip budget processor, no dedicated GPU, 3.2 2 inch screen, a 3.2 inch megapixel camera, it does have a mirror. Here we have the microphone, call in button, call button, this one also unlocks the screen. We have the micro SD, the volume, the mini USB, headphone jack, and camera button. These buttons here are uh, sometimes a little buggy. Um, even with the update, the phone still a little bit slow. It only has 256 RAM, although the ROM on it is uh, 512. This is the LG Optimus. It has a 600 megahertz processor with a dedicated GPU, 512 on the RAM, 3.2 inch screen, a 3.2 inch megapixel camera. All these phones have an external speaker, so we have the US micro USB physical keys on the menu, a micro SD, headphone jack, power button, volume buttons, dedicated voice button, and a dedicated camera button. The screen on it is pretty responsive. And here we have their latest, the Motorola Triumph. It has a 1000 megahertz Snapdragon processor, 512 RAM, 4.1 inch screen, 5 megapixel camera with a LED flash. We have, the mic we have the micro USB on it. It also has a mini HDMI that you can hook to a TV. Now remember with the with that one, once you plug it in, the headphone jack and the external speaker will be disabled. We have physical menu buttons, or not touch menu buttons, not physical. This is the power and unlock button here. Headphone jack, volume buttons. The uh, touch on this one is pretty responsive. Um, very responsive on these um, non-physical keys for the menu. As you can see here, this is a little different if you can see on the bottom here um, how it is animated. Now when I first got this, when I first got the Triumph, it was defective. I had problems with it the touch screen not responding for a certain amount of time. If I locked it, unlocked it, then it would go back. But once they switched the phone out for me, um, it was fine. It just turned out to be a defective screen. Keyboard for the Samsung Intercept. Currently it is only equipped with an Android keyboard, although you can find others on the market to install. but it also has the slide out QWERTY. With the Optimus keyboard, you have the option of swipe or the Android keyboard. I personally prefer the Android, but this is what the swipe can do. Okay, here we have the Motorola Triumph. Uh, with the keyboard, you have uh, different op options. Right now, I have it in the talkback, which is pretty unique um, for somebody that's visually impaired. You do have to um, set, uh, turn it on in accessibility first. Market. Uh, so, Messaging. let's show you Messaging. what it can do. 
So when it says type to compose, you actually hold down long on the volume. Okay, so and to get rid of that is volume down and hold. So the other one that the Motorola Triumph has is the touch pal. And so with that one, um, you can have it try to recognize your words. And also from here, well first it has to be erased. We can shut that off. And then the other keyboard is the uh, basic Android keyboard which I found to be pretty responsive. I've, I really like the responsiveness of this touch screen here. Boot times for the phones. The Samsung Intercept got 1 minute and 13 seconds. The LG Optimus got 35 seconds. And the Motorola Triumph got 33 seconds. Battery life for the phones. The LG Optimus came out top winner. I ran the same programs, installations, all in the same battery. I did get quite a bit of life out of it. Um, so LG Optimus was top. Uh, the Samsung Intercept, it's not showing yellow because I did stick it on the charger for a little bit. It was completely dying. Uh, the Motorola Triumph, I have not stuck on the charger. It is in the yellow, but with the Motorola Triumph, I was using the um, flash on the camera quite a bit, so that didn't help. So if I had to rate it in battery, I would say LG Optimus is the first, the Triumph, and then Intercept is last. I found the Samsung Intercept and the Motorola Triumph to be uh, pretty close to the same on color clarity. So if you've seen that screen, that's about what it is. A little bit of a blue tinge. The LG Optimus has the um, better, brighter whites and crisper blacks. And then again, the LG Optimus has the crisper, brighter colors. And here we have just one more side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, for text clarity, I tried to bring the text to about the same size on each screen. Here we're going to do a YouTube video and show you how they play. Right now they're frozen about the same spot and you can see the um, quality of the colors. I'm actually liking the Motorola Triumph even with the blue cast. So we'll go with the Samsung Intercept. And then we'll do the Optimus. And we'll do the Motorola Triumph. Okay, we're going to go over camera quality and recording video quality. I will post samples of the pictures that these phones actually take um, on this video coming up and a little snippet of the videos and with motion so you can see the screen tearing that shows up And then up we on have them. the Motorola Triumph. does not have a dedicated camera button, but you can go ahead and put a shortcut and open it up.
When I first started using the camera on the Motorola Triumph, I was not impressed at all. In fact, I was starting to hate it, get a little concerned. But as you look into the menu here, there are so many customizations. Um, you just have to play around with it and learn how to use it. Because you have, not only do you have color effects, if you keep on going, you have ISO selection and metering mode auto banding for your megahertz and I found that the colors were coming out really washed out and uh, once I set the saturation and brought it up the colors look great so you're just gonna have to play with it you have your contrast settings sharpness brightness I mean, just keep on going I was really surprised you can do a grid shutter and also in here you can shut the shutter sound off which is something that you couldn't do on the other cameras without just turning the volume all the way off so um, very nice surprise here's a little thing I found interesting you can touch in the area that you want to autofocus. Great for macro shots. where you choose main camera and front camera. That's the other thing is the Motorola has a VGA camera on the front. And when I chose custom, I'm able to go into the video quality and choose the 720p um, VGA. You know, QF, QCIF, as well as the encoder for it. So, pretty nice on that.